species thinks that this yoke is part of itself. And the yoke is not only part of itself, but it needs this yoke for its guidance. And the yoke is used to, to, to help this beast do the one who bears the reins bidding. See, see, whoever bears the reins, and, and the reins are these leather straps attached to the yoke. Now, the yoke is there in the beast's youth. So what happens? This beast grows up day in and day out with the yoke around its neck. And it's had some training in being guided by the one who placed the yoke on the beast's neck. It has been this way all through its life, so much so that without the yoke, the beast doesn't even feel natural. If it doesn't have the yoke, it, it's like, it's like it feels homesick. It, it becomes a security blanket because not only does it need the yoke, here's what else happens to this beast in its youth. I, I got to set this up. Y'all going to see how this relates to us uh, and the youth. Because what happens with this yoke is that while uh, it's young and it's going throughout its life, when it is old enough, the farmer begins to teach it how to plow the field. Now, in the plowing of the field, the beast gets a reward. Y'all gonna help me right along in here because, because see, y'all know something about why you should not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Oh, okay, okay. Let me talk over here and let me help y'all, the country boys, understand. Watch this here. If the ox is muzzled, when it goes to plow this field, uh, it's not able to get its nourishment in the sweet corn of the field. It, it worked to, to plow the field, but it's not able to get the nourishment. And sooner or later, the beast will either become faint or, or won't desire to work. But if the beast is not muzzled, not only will it plow the field, but it will be glad. Y'all don't hear me. It will be glad to plow the field because it's getting that corn, that nourishment as it goes. And even today, even today, and, and, and over there in Israel and other places in the Middle East, it is next to sin, considered among the farming class, it is next to sin to muzzle that ox. Because that ox plowed the field, and without the ox, the farmer doesn't have its living. Oh, man, y'all. Because, see, what's going to happen the farmer is not just plowing the field in hope for its own nourishment, but it's got a family to come. Okay. Okay. The yoke is the device. The yoke represents our teaching. The yoke is the guidance. The yoke is the rules, the values. Uh, the things that we bring uh, to our children and tell them the do's and the don'ts of life. And, and the yoke needs to be placed upon a young one before they can even get into society and assimilate into what is contrary to God's yoke. Okay. Now, now, not only uh, do, you sh do you do this uh, in hopes of being a good parent, but you know that there will be, if God blesses the child, God, there will be a generation to come up after. So not only do you plow in hope 
for your ox figuratively, your children, and, and not only do you allow them to see what is good by holding on. See, we got to show some rewards of, 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 the, of the, the teaching. You know, I used to, I, I, I told myself when I left South Florida and, and I tried to get some things together, I'm going to tell you what really helped me out. Uh, when I tried to make an effort in Bible class, I just, I just tried. Just, just tried. But what really helped me was I saw that the people, the, the, the older folk, were more than willing to help me. Don't muzzle the ox. They were more than willing to reward me. Okay. When I just made an effort. Let me show you, let me show you what I mean. When I got to uh, Tallahassee, Florida, and I was sitting in a, uh, a youth class, and it was full of uh, high school age kids. I was 17 years old, and, and one of the elders was teaching the class, and he would ask questions, and we were sitting there just so disinterested. We didn't care nothing about uh, you know, the disciples, whether it was 12 or 24 of them, we, we didn't care. And, and, you know, he would ask questions after questions. And then finally, I said, you know, I'm going to do something different today. We, instead of just sitting there, you know, it, it was already boring. I, 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 can I keep it real? I'm just saying, it was already boring. And so... When a question was asked this time, instead of just sitting there and, and looking at each other's faces and, and, and saying, well, 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 you know, who gonna answer? I just blurted out the answer. Didn't know it was right. And from that day forward, it was interesting just to do something different. What happened? There had been a yoke placed on me that I didn't know about before I got in the class. There was a yoke of street life. Y'all helping somebody. There was a, a, a yoke that said, uh, this don't feel right. You ought to be somewhere, you know, bobbing your head to some hip hop rather than going through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You, 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 there was a yoke that was, but when I blurted out the end, I just, just blurted it out. Something interesting happened in that the teacher now took an interest. And, and I believe in his wisdom, he knew there was an opportunity to break a yoke that had been placed and it can now be replaced with a yoke that will benefit rather than tear down. Because what I didn't know is that the yoke that was already on me that I didn't know was on me was the social norms that I had learned. These, these things that I had learned, this, this hard persona that I had learned, this, this, this persona that say, don't you take no mess. Oh, this, this, this short man syndrome that say, just because since you're small, folk going to try you, so you better make sure they know. And, and that was the yoke. That, and, 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 and tell the truth, you know, that stuff don't never really go completely away. <laughs> but you learn to control it. Okay, 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 all right. So what has happened to our youth today? Let's make this relevant. We know we're supposed to bring them up. Let's, let's go up to Matthew 11. Let's see what Jesus says. Matthew 11 and verse 28. There is another yoke that we should take upon us. There is a yoke that Christ gives. Now that we know what the yoke was, is used for, and we know the yoke that we shouldn't bear, 
I just want to take a few looks at the yoke of Christ. Because whether you know it or not, you are a servant to somebody. And Romans 6 and verse 17 says it this way. Know ye not that ye are servants to whom you yield yourself to, be it obedience unto life or sin unto death? So if you yield yourself to Christ, you are a servant and you have a yoke. If you yield yourself to sin, you are a servant and you have a yoke. But one of these yoke is going to lead you to green pastures. And, and, but the, and the other yoke will lead you to damnation. So Christ has come that we could be led to the right place. Matthew uh, 11 and 28, the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you Rest. Let, 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 me, let me talk about this heavy laden. See, it is uh, believed, again, remember I told you that the thing about the devil's yoke is that it started so early that you don't even know you got a yoke. Now, you can, we can do the same thing in Christianity, and, and that would be good for us, but, but he has taken on the same thing, and we got this yoke. And the yoke is heavy, but, but, but you've been bearing the yoke so long, you haven't noticed the weight. Okay, okay, what you saying, Taylor? I'm saying that while you have this yoke on you, and you have these teachings on you, now, now here's the science, watch this. The yoke, most of us in here, if you look like me, have on us is contrary to the dominant culture. Okay, you, you ain't understanding what I'm saying. I, I, think, I think I got, oh, okay, somebody got. Statistically, our yoke that we are used to is not leading us to green pastures. Our yoke is leading us to four walls and iron bars. Statistically, the yoke that we are accustomed to is, is heavy, but the, you, you only realize the weight of the yoke when Satan comes to collect on the field that you have plowed. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. See, see. While you're young and you're bearing this yoke and you're plowing away, you don't even understand. You think it's good to have many, the, the youth, the youth. They think it's good, especially men. Watch this here. Think it's good to have many uh, uh, sexual partners. It's good. Makes you the man. The more of them you can get. You the man. And, and now, now, while you bearing that yoke yeah. and, and you doing what that yoke tells you, it feels good. Yeah. But it won't be until you go to the doctor. Yeah. It won't be until you throwing up in the morning. Yeah. It won't be until you realize what that got you that the yoke becomes heavy and you start to realize the weight and, and, and the feel you have been plowing until uh, that point. And, and sadly enough, some of us don't wake up then. Uh, but, but, but Jesus says, this is, these are those that have labored, they're heavy laden, but Jesus' hope is that he will give us Rest. Now, 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 before I finish Matthew, before I finish Matthew, let's, let's talk about the responsibility of the farmers. See, the farmer had a responsibility to make sure that the oxen knew its job. Uh, they, but, but see, if the farmer uh, taught the ox, 
to plow another man's field. If the farmer plowed the wrong field, the ox wants and it has a tendency to go where it's used to going. If, 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 if I'm next to uh, Farmer Cadill Hopper's field, and, and he has a certain type of corn in his field, and, and, and I just wake up and see, now, now watch where I'm going. Sometimes daddy ain't home, and whether daddy know it or not, his ox is plowing a field, but it's plowing without the guidance of the man in the home. Y'all gonna see where I'm going. Even if he is home, some of us have been P-U-I, plowing under the influence. And you don't know which field you should plow. So you have your children plowing or your ox is plowing. They've gotten used to the corn of another man's field. Y'all gonna help me someone? What, 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 what? Bring it, bring it to me, Taylor. Okay. When your child is up in the room, 10 years old, we got devices now. iPad. Cell, cell got, got cell phone. You know, what, what, what happens? Uh, there is a plowing going on on the internet. And, and what happens is that this yoke that's on them because they get caught up in the net. And, and the net is teaching our children what entertainment is. Uh, the net is teaching our children that they ought to do certain things in order to be esteemed highly. Uh, but, but, but it won't be until they get grown that Satan comes to collect the debt on that field. And what has happened is that while they are plowing the field, the daddy has been missing. Mama is under the influence and they've been out there plowing the wrong field because the farmer has not been guiding the yoke. And if he ain't guiding the yoke, that ox gonna plow. It is gonna plow. But your, our jobs is to make sure it plows the right field. So, so that's why the proverbial writer says, train up a child in the way that's God in the plot, that they should not, 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 not just think it's going to happen, but you got to do some training. You know, the best way to learn a language, they tell me, is by immersion into that language. And if you are immersed in it, if you get dropped in the middle of Venezuela with all of this stuff going on, stay there about six months. You learn some Spanish. Oh, you'll learn some Spanish real quick. Get off me. Stop hitting me. But, it, you know, you be saying that in Spanish. We don't want this government, whatever it is that they're saying. You know, I'm just bringing you some current events. And, and so what happens with the child is that if the child is immersed into the yoke of Christ, they will naturally, I know what time it is, brother. They will naturally take on these things. Now watch this. I'm going to leave us with this because you're the farmers. You're the farmers. Sunday, and y'all have Tuesday night Bible study down here, right? Tuesday night. Wednesday night, y'all have Wednesday night. Bringing your child on Sunday and Wednesday does not constitute training up. Y all, y all, training up is what happens on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and their guidance by their farmers in which way they should go and who has the reins on their yoke. So as I close, the message to the farmers this morning is to make sure uh, that you immerse and, and get that ox while he's young. Get that ox while she is young. So when they grow up, to do anything different is foreign and just don't feel right. 
But right now, unfortunately, we, we have let the internet do some plowing. And we have let the internet and, and, and society take over. We got to take back the reins, church. We got to break these chains. We got to break these yoke because it's not getting us nowhere but institutionalized. And, and so we got to put the yoke of Christ on our children and on our own lives. So we, we are closing. I want to thank you very much. And I'll leave it to the brethren at this time. And I pray that we will be able to expound on this message in the Lord's service. Thank you very much.